Got a big plan, this mindset Maybe it's right at the right place In the right time, maybe tonight In the whisper of my eyes I don't want to make it Motherfucking cut! Gina! Yes, Ryan? What scene is this? What page are we on? Scene 23, page 70, 52 pages to go. And in 51 of those pages, does it say, infer, or allude to anything about the leading lady being dead? Shit. Brian, I didn't mean to, I thought that... Oh, 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 Jimmy didn't mean to kill her, so that's okay. Well, maybe we can make this into a kind of weekend of Bernie's type scenario. That might work. That is not the film I'm No, you Friday. fucking asshole! I'm ruined! This is supposed to be the fucking dream sequence, you moron! Shit, dream screwed. sequence? Brian, I'm so sorry. Sars told me to! I most certainly did not, not until the very end of the script, like every other time we've ever done it. Why don't we take a five? We fucked. Fucking screwed. Jimmy, you fucking twat! We're not screwed. We'll figure this out. We'll need to get a little creative. But that's the spirit of indie filmmaking we've been hearing so much about. We need a replacement, that's all. Where are we going to get a replacement? Yes. Where are we going to find another blonde big boom bimbo who wants to be in a movie? Oh, fuck. No, please, you don't have to do this. I trusted you, Leonard. Why would you make me fall in love with you if you wanted to kill me? And the worst part is, even though you want to kill me, I still love you. You're the best thing that's ever Not happened even close. to me. And I just Maybe wanted you to know that before up. I die. That would work if there was anything to push on. Even though a boob job. We'll just get her a boob job. It doesn't want to take time. Don't they just fill them up? <sighs> Um, sh should I keep going? I think we've seen all we need to see. We'll be in touch. Not horrible, just horrible. Well, it's not like we're looking for a winner here. We're looking for somebody to kill. Besides, we have a moral obligation to get rid of somebody really annoying. What about that second one? She seemed like a real twat. She wasn't even blonde. She wasn't even close to Well, being. maybe if we... <sighs> Hi, sorry I'm late. You're still holding auditions, right? Perfect. I'm Libby. Shall I begin? Strange things keep happening. And I just know that I can trust you, Leonard. I'm so happy that we're getting married. But I'm nervous about all these murders. I'm worried about you working late at night. Well, don't worry about it, though, because we are free. We are to worry that. Cut. Let's touch up before we move on. Make up. Where is motherfucking Ted? Shut the fuck up. Sorry. You're not the director, Gina. I'm the director. You assist me. That's your job. Assistant to the director. Assistant, director. Director, assistant. Got it? Go, go, go! Everybody get fucking moving! Strike it! Has Libby left yet? I think so. Damn. Thought I'd get to fuck her at least once before we off her. You're gonna be fucking joking me! You're gonna be fucking joking! What the fuck is wrong with you? Can you remember more than fucking two words strung together? You sorry, Brian, I'm sorry! It's gone by the fucking game! I'm sorry, Brian, I'm sorry! I'm sorry, Brian, I'm sorry! I'm sorry, Brian, I'm sorry! I'm sorry, Brian, Brian? Hello?
You know what? Fuck this. Fuck you guys. Don't worry about me, Jessica. I can take care of myself. I know you can. I guess I'm just being silly. And cut. Brian, do you have a minute? I have some questions about this green card. Questions? Yeah, it's just, uh, I think I'm missing some pages. I'm sure that if Gina gave you that, it's all there. I'll take it up with her. Reset. Call it. Scene one, Apple. Take two, Margaret. And action. And I know that I can trust you, Leonard. I'm so happy that we're getting married, but I'm, I'm nervous about all these murders. I'm worried about you working late at night. Cut. Scripty? God damn it, where's Jerry? Don't worry about me, Jessica. I can take care of myself. Are we still rolling? We'll fix it in post. Shit! <gasps> Brian! Fuck! Stop! Stop! You're crazy! What the fuck just happened? Can you shut up? I'll tell you if you just calm down. Calm down? Yes! Calm. I can't think with you screaming at me. Go sit down. I am not sitting down. Just sit. You have ten seconds to tell me what happened or I'll scream oh, my Jesus. head Jesus! Fine. I know what you are. What I am? What you are. What you all are. What are we then? Your snuff. A real live snuff film crew. Shit. Yeah. How did you find out? It's not as if you guys are discreet or anything. You think I didn't notice? We've just been shooting the end of a movie. And all those creepy glances. It wasn't difficult to put two and two Shit. together. So what now? Now, you help me. Help you? Why would I do that? Well, first of all, us girls gotta stick together and all that. Girl power and shit. But really, this movie needs to be finished somehow, right? Crews, they come and go. But somebody has to finish the movie. It'll be needing a new director. A new director? Would you like to direct, Gina? Gina. They didn't realize you did catering on the side. Very funny. Stupid PA called in sick. Thanks for coming in early. Why did you call me then? Kinos aren't working. I figured you'd like some more time to come up with an alternative lighting plan so that you wouldn't get flustered later. I never get flustered. Look at that, you dumb bitch. It's unplugged. <sighs> nice. <sighs> Do we need to move the body? Yeah. Crew's coming here before we leave for location. Shit. Put milk in it or get your own fucking coffee! Is that? Yeah. How long? Not long after we leave for location. Excellent. You ready to roll? Did you get the changes I sent you? Yes, I did, but I don't understand. Okay, why would I run back into the woods? I've already done it's that. It's for another dream sequence we're adding. 
We'll shoot the new additions first, and then it's back to business as usual. Well, hey, I'm not going to say no to more screen time. Right? <laughs> Where's Search? He's not feeling well. He looked pretty toast to me. Are oh, you fucking kidding me? We're fine. The shot list is set. Sid's going to shoot it. We've done this before, remember? Practice makes perfect and shit. Fuck. Call it. 47 take two. Mark. Everybody settle. Light on set. Action. What the fuck? You got a frame. Yes, Jimmy. Exactly. What the fuck? I made some changes to the script. Put me online. What's happening? What's happening here? Finally realized your crew got away from you, did you? I've been directing this crew for years. Years. Do you know what I have to show for? No thank you. No great job, Gina. Not even a motherfucking IMDb credit. So you pay a you pretty hard, huh? Well, you're not gonna get up and run. This is your preferred method of escape. Not bad, huh? I'm just so happy it's all over. <sighs> over. We have a film to finish. What? <laughs> Fucking tear you apart. Oh, lurking in the woods again, are we, Petey? What do you got for me this time, Harry? Lasagna. Peter, somebody's got to make sure you eat. Meet up. Weather's getting warmer. It's certainly no. You're out there enough. Listen, Petey, it's been months. It's not safe to be lurking out in the woods that often. I'll tell you what. Listening to the worms. You can't possibly hear the worms. Not right now I can. It's early morning and they're still asleep. What are you doing here? Here you go. Let's 
So, you're lost? Oh, yes, quite. Oh, I have a phone you can use if you want to call someone. Right. Well, I'm going to call the police then. Are you running from something? No. I'm in the wrong dimensional plane. Uh, okay. Okay, you believe me? No? Okay, you can go. Right you there. People like me, people where I'm from, we know things. You lost somebody. You loved her very, very much. She loved you too, but you lost her. How did you know that? You're in so much pain. But I can make it better. I'll take you with me back to my plane of being. You don't feel any pain there. Pain, loss, melancholy, those are notions that don't exist there. Only happiness. Being ridiculous. It's ridiculous how filthy you are here. Uh, clean yourself up and then we'll figure out what to do with you. What's your name, kid? What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Right. I do like Kit. Okay. What are you thinking about? Hmm? I asked you what you were thinking about. <sighs> Wondering what the fuck you're doing here. Where'd you come from? And what am I supposed to do with you now? What do you mean, do with me? I'm a human being. You don't just do something with me. I'm not a problem that needs to be taken care of. You can talk to me. I'm a good person to talk to, I think. I, I'd like to talk to me, at least. What happened to you? What happened to you? You're making me throw a fit. We're just in lollygagging when we have so much to do. Well, what do you want to do? Go away, back to where I belong. Oh, right, to that plane of being of yours. Sure, let's go. Really? Yeah. Give me your hand. Now hold on tight, okay? In three, two... Shut up. Pardon? Don't condescend me. I'm not stupid. I'm a lot of things, but I'm not stupid. Yeah. I'll help you. Come on. Help you teleport. Help us. And it's not teleporting. It's interdimensional traveling. Oh, okay. Well... It looks very complicated, like there's a whole lot of metal involved. Yeah, well, we're transcending time and space here. It's going to take a bit of an effort. All right. Uh, well, I got a bunch of scrap metal out in the shed. I'll go grab some. Working on miracles of modern science. Get down here right now. I want to talk to you. All right. I'll be right back. You know who that is? 
Oh, could? Oh, there's a friend of mine. Pete, she's fucking bonkers. Don't you act like your head's been in the sand. She's the one who escaped from King's Park and they've been looking for her everywhere. Yeah, and they've been cheap looking. She doesn't belong there. So what, she belongs with you? No, 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 you know what? I'm calling the cops. She's crazy and she could be dangerous. She's not that. fucking dangerous. Pete! You wanna know what's dangerous? Being so fucking lonely, you can't breathe. Like, constantly feeling like you're dying of internal bleeding every time you even think about your dead wife Pete. and the fucking house she left you alone in. Hmm? Pete. And finally, Finally finding some fucking semblance of happiness and having your Pete. own brother threaten to take that Pete. away from you? That's fucking dangerous. Pete! You're not in your right mind. And you know that I can't let this happen. We're so close, come help. Tell me more about where we're going. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the Big Apple Circus! The story begins in Kent, England in 1974, when American entertainers Paul Binder and Michael Christensen became juggling partners. Their goal was a simple one, to make people happy, and they did, performing in England, then France, and America again, to the street. Sheesh. One pin. One pin. They had a vision, and the determination to bring that vision to fruition. One. As soon as they found a space in New York City big enough to raise a tent, the Big Apple Circus was born. Their dream became a legacy, displaying the best circus performers for decades to come. Performers like animal trainer Jenny Vidbell. Like many in the circus, Jenny was born into it, herself being a third-generation animal trainer. You know, I'm a third generation. I know what my grandparents experienced, my parents, and now me. And, um, you know, a, a big thing is that it's become uh, much more theatrical, and it's definitely uh, there's something for everybody. They're all different. I have um, seven horses, and every one of them has a different personality, and, and I treat them uh, differently. And the main thing is to spend time with them. I have to know each one's personality. Yeah, I've worked with the two major um, circuses in the U.S., and that is Ringling Brothers and uh, Big Up the Circus. And, uh, there are many wonderful small traveling circuses, but I have so many animals 
that I can't keep up with the travel that they do. They, they'll travel sometimes every day. Um, and I used to do that when I had a small amount of animals and it was easy to, to uh, maintain. But now I have so many uh, that it would be impossible for me to keep everybody organized and, and happy and move it down the road every day. So I love Big Apple because we stay in one spot for a long time. Uh, we have plenty of uh, breaks and rest. And Big Apple Circus is so um, cooperative with me and uh, there's never any pressure in the animal department. Um, if, I, if I go to the office and say, you know what, there's one horse who's not feeling it tonight so he's not going to work, there's absolutely no problem at all and, and he sits it out and um, <laughs> we, can, we do the show without him. And Big Apple is just so sensitive to the animals that it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing place. It's not a job, it's my life, and uh, um, I go to bed at night thinking about them, um, and they're the last the last thing I do at night before I go to bed is check on everybody and make sure they're okay um, and happy and, and uh, everything's fine. And in the morning, it's, you know, before my coffee, <laughs> before, you know, I, I take one look in the mirror, which could be pretty scary in the morning, I go out and make sure everybody's okay. On the other side of the circus spectrum is John Kennedy Kane, the ringmaster at Big Apple. Unlike many of his fellow performers, he was not born into the circus lifestyle. He ran away to it and embraced it all on his own. My family is uh, we're, uh, politicians and uh, used car salesmen, so uh, me joining the circus actually helped our image. What about that little boy who always wanted to join the circus only to grow up? and be the ringmaster. That is real magic. And I don't know, it does get in your blood, and I do know people like myself who are first generation, and we all uh, kind of pat each other on the back because we want to do it. It's our choice, and so we really enjoy doing it. So when we watch each other, there is a joy that you see in the ring. Then maybe somebody who was born into it, and, and that's what their grandfather did, and this, that, and the other, I don't know. You think about how does a kid with uh, no acrobatic training or ability, how's he going to join the circus? Well, uh, there was another circus that had a clown college, and so you could fill out application to go to clown college. And uh, I never wanted to be a clown in my life, but I thought maybe that's my way to get my foot in the door. I uh, applied to clown college and uh, did not get accepted. So my father said it was embarrassing enough to have a son who applied to clown college. Now you would have to tell people his son did not get accepted into clown college. So I ended up going to a clown community college, NYU. Thank you. Uh, I think when uh, people have their regular jobs and uh, regular nine to five, that you come and watch the show and you think, oh, that must be fun and glamorous and stuff. And it is part of it. But other parts, it's very much a job. Um, traveling is a great part of the job. So uh, many times you'll hear, oh, I love to travel and see the different cities and all that. When I was on circuses that we were in a different town every day, which I did a lot of that in my career, you're traveling during the night, you're setting up during the day, you're doing shows and you're moving on. So you end up not seeing any of the towns, you know, it's all a blur, you know and you never worry about the town you're in, you always worry about the town you're going to. Is the truck ready? Is everything gassed up? Are we gonna make it? What's the weather like? All that kind of stuff. So it's a real, uh, it's not an easy way of life at all. There is something about the size of me that uh, kids, you know, in all their cartoons and all their books, that's the image of the ringmaster. Uh, and here, they, on this show, they made me, uh, asked me to grow the mutton shop and, um, so it's kind of all fit in now where not only do I sound like the ringmaster, but I look like the ringmaster. And then there's a whole thing of acting like the ringmaster. I don't, when you saw the show, it looks like I'm in charge. I don't have one bit of authority backstage, but out in the ring, the audience thinks that I control everything. <laughs>